So there's the front row of the grid. Brian Morrison, pole position. As I said, two tenths of a second outside the lap record. Then alongside him, Mark Linscott, who, like Morrison, is riding a Honda. Trevor Nation, number five from Salisbury, on yet another Honda. V V four cylinder machines, these uh, 750s. He's just having number 64 there is uh, Charlie Corner. Just making sure his machine's going to start when he wants it to. Which he doesn't seem to be succeeding in doing at the present moment. Charlie Corner, who comes from North Moulton, X250cc champion. Not too happy about things from, from the look of them because this uh, is a clutch start, you see. They're sitting on the bikes with the engines running, the clutch held out with the left hand, the gear already in first. So, 10 laps, 23.6 miles, and the man to beat is very much Brian Morrison, number two, because he has won six of the eight rounds, finished second in one of the others, failed to finish the seventh, and that means any time up to 30 seconds, and they've gone immediately into the right-hander at Allard. Now the complex, Campbell, Cobb and Seagrave. This is Cobb, the left-hander. Now Seagrave, the right-hander, solid pack of riders, but already the leader is a long, long way ahead of the last man on the track. So dramatic is his performance advantage, and it looks very much to me like Brian Morrison. It is Brian Morrison, who was something like a second faster in practice than anybody else. He's really demonstrating his class. He went round in 123.9. The second fastest, Mark Linscott, went round in 124.4. And Morrison is not only leading the Senior Stock Championship, but he's uh, in first place in the Super Stock Championship, second in the Formula One Championship, this ex-bakery salesman from Kirkcaldy, and he's really stamping his mark on British racing in the national classes at the moment, hoping to take part in Grand Prix racing next year. Here he comes through the chicane, the end of the first lap, and already at the end of the first lap, he has a two-second lead over Steve Chambers in second position, and that is very interesting because Steve Chambers in the yellow top leathers, you'll just see him as you watch Brian Morrison now, is only having his second ride on an RC30 Honda, but up into second place now, it's Mark Phillips, his highest place this year, second position. He's on a Yamaha. These bikes produce about 110 horsepower from their 750cc blueprinted standard engines. And, and Brian Morrison is really in a class of his own at the moment. You're looking at the second man, Mark Phillips, from Steeple Morton. The Formula One British champion of 1986. There is Brian Morrison on lap two, so he's got another eight full laps to go at the end of this one. And, well, if, if Morrison is, is wanting to make a, a television demonstration, hopefully for, to help him with his sponsorship for 1989, he is certainly succeeding. This tall, quiet, crew-cutted Scott is, look at that, that's the gap after two laps. And he's still got eight to go. Mark Phillips goes through in second position. In third position, it is Steve Chambers. Behind Chambers in fourth position, it is Gary Weston. In fifth position, it's Ray Stringer. And in sixth place, Dennis Ireland. Now let's have a look at the gap which exists between Brian Morrison and the second place man. This is quite astounding because he, he won't have an enormous machine advantage over the others. Anybody can buy the bike that he is on provided 
or bike like the one he's on, provided they've got enough money to do so. Cost them a lot of money, but they are available. So, there is the battle for third and fourth positions. In fourth, third position, it's Steve Chambers leading there. And in fourth place, it's Gary Weston. Chambers on a Honda, Gary Weston on a Suzuki. And it is actually getting a bit exciting behind them with Morrison now coming down to club the chicane for the third time, another seven laps to go. And there is a real fight for third position. Mark Phillips is second. There goes Mark Phillips through the chicane. But look at this battle for third position with leading it. Steve Chambers, number six. Behind him in fourth place is Gary Weston. Then behind Weston, Trevor Nation on the Honda. Behind Trevor Nation in sixth position, Ray Stringer. And seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh and twelfth are not so very far behind either. Here is Steve Chambers. And that is definitely the bike of 1988. The RC30 Honda. Steve Chambers pulling away a bit in second place, pulling away from the battle now between Gary Weston, who is in fourth place, Trevor Nation, who is fifth. There is Chambers. Mark Phillips second, Chambers third. And you can see from the width of Cruxton that there is plenty of room for riders to pass if only they can build up the speed. And building up the speed depends on how quickly they can get out of the corners. The surface is absolutely superb for dry conditions. Some worries for motorcycles in the wet, which they certainly had this morning when the practice was very, very wet indeed. But for the conditions that we've got at the moment, the track surface is excellent. And now Mark Phillips has gone through in second place. Here is the battle for third, going out of club, led still by Steve Chambers, who comes from Saxelby. And that is Brian Morrison, the incomparable Brian Morrison, in the classes that he rides in. He's in five races today. He's ridden in one already and finished in fifth place. Now look at the look, look at the win he's going to have, and this will be the seventh time that Morrison will have won in this class. Morrison goes through out of Campbell Cobb at Seagrave. There behind him is Mark Phillips in the Yamaha, and here is the battle for third. So it's Morrison and Phillips way out. Steve Chambers, number six there, still in third position, and the and the best that Steve Chambers has had since he switched to his Honda was a third place at Snetterton and a fourth at Cadwell, which you may well have seen. But he's lost it. He's lost that third position now and the fourth position because up ahead of Steve Chambers, who goes down to two places, but he's fighting back now. He's up into fourth place as I talk to you. And as I talk to you, Brian Morrison crosses the line Mark Linscott, who was second fastest in practice, comes from Nottingham, is up into third place now. Heel right, heel left, heel right again, out of the chicane. Five laps completed, five to go. Linscott is up into third position. Down to fourth place goes Steve Chambers, and there he is, behind Chambers in fifth position now. It's Dennis Ireland, the New Zealand rider, the man who won the Belgian Grand Prix some years ago. And here is the battle for that third position that we're looking at. That's Chambers, who is actually in fourth place, was when he crossed the line anyway, and is still. Lynch got ahead of him, but Chambers is going to have to fight to hold his fourth position, because as you see, Dennis Ireland is right behind him. That's the man in the blue leathers. Right over on the side walls of the tyres, trying to sneak through on the inside of Steve Chambers who cuts across to the apex coming out of church going into church now out of church now onto the fastest part of the course Brooklyn's up into top gear and they can hang on to top gear and maximum revs for quite a long time as three six nine ten riders and searing through 
there goes Chambers again. He really took his courage in both hands there and went for it as they approached the chicane. And he's back into third position. Ahead of him still is Brian Morrison and Mark Phillips. This is the battle for third. Lynn Scott retakes it. Lynn Scott on the Honda has retaken third position from Chambers on the Honda. Crouch down over the bars. This is lap seven. The fastest lap we have so far is is Brian Morrison, who has broken the lap record. Brian Morrison has gone round one-tenth of a second faster than the lap record at some 101.5 miles an hour in perfect conditions. He gets two points for a fastest lap, 15 for victory. Morrison, there he is, there is the leader on the seventh lap. Three laps to go at the end of this one. He's won six times, he's finished second... Uh, once, two, seven fastest laps, well, eight fastest laps now, because I can't... Looks over his shoulder, and there's nobody in sight. A familiar story for Brian Morrison, who's raced in New Zealand, raced in South Africa, British production champion, four-time Scottish champion, eight years' experience, and he's, he's really got a lot of ability now, which will more than justify him moving up to Grand Prix racing if he can raise the money to get the machine to pay for the ride. He's riding magnificently. You think he was in a race of his own? Well, he is virtually. Perfect timing, excellent line, and Brian Morrison is leading this Motorcycle News EBC Brakes Superstock Race at Thruxton on lap 8 out of 10. And nothing short of mechanical problems are going to stop it because look, that is quite incredible. And still nobody in sight. Now, this should be Mark Phillips coming towards us, number four on the Yamaha. Yes, it is. Mark Phillips on the Yamaha. Well, a change there because surging past Mark Phillips and you can see how spread out they are behind the Englishman now, Mark Phillips, with Scotsman Brian Morrison way, way, way ahead as they come down Brooklands, down Woodham Hill, into the chicane. Morrison is starting his penultimate lap, his ninth lap out of ten now as into second place, there is Mark Phillips. But it is Lynn Scott ahead. Lynn Scott is now second, Phillips is third. Chambers is in fourth position, and I think Mark Phillips has got a problem. That's Mark Lynn Scott on lap nine. Well, he has suddenly found a burst of extra speed because he's pulling away hand over fist from the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth men behind him. He's not going to make any impression on Brian Morrison that could affect the Scotsman's chances of winning. But Lynn Scott, like Morrison, is riding magnificently. And behind, now, you saw behind him Mark Phillips in the red leathers on the Yamaha. It's Honda leading, Honda second, Morrison leading. This man, number 16, Lynn Scott in second place. And now the battle for third, which Mark Phillips is just holding. Mark Phillips from Stephen Ward, ex-farmer, ex makes his living out of motorcycle racing these days. And Morrison is coming up to the chicane to start now, shortly, his last lap into the chicane for the ninth time. Here he is, and I'll tell you what the gap is between Brian Morrison on his Honda and Mark Linscott in second position. And Morrison there on his last lap has broken the lap record. And he leads Mark Linscott now. He's going through to start his last lap by an amazing 13 seconds. But Chambers is up to third. Nation is up to fourth. We're staying with Brian Morrison, but Steve Chambers has moved up into third position. Morrison has moved up into fourth position. Up into fifth position has gone Dennis Ireland. Into sixth position, Gary Weston. And Mark Phillips is missing. So he's dropped right back. And this is the last, the victorious lap of the seemingly unbeatable, certainly in this class.
Ace of Racing, Brian Morrison. One, 107.5 points he has already. He will add another 17 to that. 124.5 points for the Scotsman. Absolutely on his own. Down now, Brook through Brooklands, flat out in top gear. He sees the chicane club corner coming up in front of him. I can tell you that the chequered flag is ready to receive him home. And it is going to be the seventh time in eight races that Brian Morrison has seen that chequered flag first. Well, he's made his point, but behind him, there is indeed a fight because now Lynn Scott, Lynn Scott has gone missing and Chambers is coming through to take second place. Number six, Steve Chambers. Trevor Nation is going to finish in third position. In fourth place, Gary Weston. And in fifth place, Dennis Ireland, ahead of David Crampton in sixth place. As you see, Brian Morrison riding happily home on his victory lap. Victory then for Brian Morrison, Steve Chambers in second place, Trevor Nation in third position, Gary Weston in fourth place, Dennis Ireland in fifth position, and David Crampton sixth. If you're a British motorcycle racing enthusiast, I don't think there'll be much argument about the fact that the greatest name in the history of the sport is this one, Norton. Well, Norton have been out of racing for many, many years, sadly, but now they've not only come back, but they've come back with a tremendously advanced machine, 600cc, and it's a rotary engine. Totally different from anything else in road racing. Simon Buckmaster is going to be riding it today. Simon, you've had a lot of experience with normal engine machines. How different is it to ride the Norton? Uh, it's very different. The power curve is constant. It pulls right from nothing right through to its uh, maximum rev, which is about 10,000. It's a superb bike to ride. Now, that 600cc translates to what in terms of brake horsepower? Well, uh, we think around about 140 at the moment. That is incredible. And top, top speed here at Thruxton? At Thruxton, about 150, I would say. It's tremendously encouraging to see Norton back in road racing. Yeah, it's fantastic. I hope the fans are enjoying it. I can promise you that the fans were enjoying it in practice today. This number 14 that you're looking at is Simon on his 140 horsepower Norton. And we're about to see the Shell Oils ACU King of Thruxton round six out of 11 for the Formula One machines. Now, for Formula One means 750cc if it's a four stroke, 500cc if it is a two stroke. They produce about, as Simon said, 135, 140 brake horsepower. They will do with the correct gearing about 180 miles an hour, not here at Thruxton. And on the grid down there in pole position is Carl Fogarty, the man who won the Ulster Grand Prix this year. He's riding one of the fabulous RC 3750cc Hondas. Number two, Brian Morrison on the grid there, is second in the championship because Daryl Dixon is leading the championship and they're going round on the parade lap now. And the fact that Darryl, Darren Dixon is leading the championship is very significant indeed because unlike most of the others who are on 750cc machines, Darren is riding a full Grand Prix four-cylinder 500cc RGP Suzuki and the P stands for Paget. Paget of Batley who have now the world rights to build these four-cylinder racing Suzukis and Darren Dixon is certainly paying their sponsorship back he's won all three of the Formula One races that we have shown on Grandstand this year I think he's going to have a job to win this one because Thruxton doesn't suit the Suzuki as well as it suits the RC30 Honda a lap record here in Formula One is one is held by no less a man than the reigning world champion in Grand Prix racing, Wayne Gardner. He did a lap at 125, which is 99.8 miles an hour. Another of the lap records at Thruxton, which is so very close to, but not in excess of 100 miles an hour. We might see it beaten today. 
because although the course was wet earlier on after rain, it has dried out. There's a dry line all the way round as I look at it. And they're coming now down into the club chicane, which is the second gear corner, and through to line up on the grid. This should be a really terrific race because uh, we have amongst the riders Roger Marshall, who's riding the Cosworth 820cc twin. And if you say 850 is in excess of 750, you are quite right, but they get a special dispensation by virtue of the fact that it's a four-stroke twin. Number two is Brian Morrison's machine that you just saw briefly in your picture there. And uh, over on the left-hand side of the grid, as you look at it, on the right-hand side of the grid as he sits on, uh, there is Darren Dixon. He's riding number nine, the Suzuki, in his very distinctive yellow leathers. Darren Dixon, 25 years old. There, number five, is Trevor Nation on the left. In, well, roughly in the middle now. Trevor Nation, who's riding a Norton, the same as Simon Buckmasters. And Trevor actually knocked one and a half seconds off the Formula One lap record at Donington in the British Grand Prix meeting. And it's tremendously heartening for motorcycle enthusiasts of racing to see the proud name of Norton back at the front again. It won its first race as a rotary in the hands of Andy McGladdery at Carnaby recently. Number 19 on the green Mini Kawasaki there is Roger Hurst. Roger Hurst, who's held the Northwest 200 lap record in his time. So it's all set to go now, but the revs die down, and away they go. A very good start by Mark Phillips, but I think he's lost the advantage. In fact, he has lost the advantage as they go into the right-hander and Allard. Each of those engines punching out something like 130 brake horsepower. And it's Jamie Whittam in the lead who has already won one of the major races here today. 21-year-old Jamie Whittam, completely unperturbed by the fact that he fell off at over 140 miles an hour in practice this morning. And Whittam now on the Suzuki, number 69, when you see him come through the chicane. There he goes. Well, can the others do anything about this tall, lanky, man from Huddersfield. Well, there's Darren Dixon is coming up well. I can see him in the picture as they come down now to the right-hander at Church. This is where they start the sweep down from Brooklands, which is left-handed at about 150 miles an hour as they come out of the left-hander here. And there's going to be a change for the lead now. Up into the lead comes Darren Dixon on the Suzuki, the four-cylinder 500cc RGP Suzuki. He leads the championship, and it looks as though he's going to prove my prophecy that the Suzuki wouldn't suit Bruxton as well as the other circuits to be wrong. In third position, it is Phil Meller. So it's a Suzuki 500 leading, then the big Suzuki of Jamie Whittam, then the big Suzuki of Phil Meller, number 10, who, like Jamie, comes from Huddersfield. There is Phil Meller. He's the man who had our camera at Carnaby, and we saw some pretty exciting shots from him. Three times winner of the TT, four times British champion, Phil Meller, who hasn't had the best of seasons so far, and will be very anxious indeed to put that right here at Thruxton. Now, leading the championship, Dixon, he is 12 points ahead of Morrison, and Morrison was not even in the first eight at the end of the first lap. At the end of the first lap, it was Dixon who's leading now, Whittam who is in second place, Mella in third position, in fourth position behind Mella, Steve Spray, who comes from Nottingham. Fifth was Carl Fogarty, the Ulster Grand Prix winner, and in sixth position, Mark Phillips. Well, here they come now, completely dry, down to the chicane, approaching it at, at, at nearly 160 miles an hour. They knock off the revs, go down into second gear, about 55 miles an hour. Darren Dixon leading. He's had his machine at Mallory for testing this week after having seized it in the British Grand Prix meeting, and Whittam is going for it. Jamie Whittam tucked into the wheel tracks of Darren Dixon as they go into the right-hander and Allard at 130 miles an hour. Now they're up to about 150, believe it or not, 12,000 RPM, sixth gear, and Whittam's in front. Whittam leads, Jamie Whittam through. 
Campbell, Cobb and Seagrave. Campbell the right-hander, Cobb the left-hander, now Seagrave the right-hander. Third gear, 80, 80 miles an hour, accelerate away, and Brian Morrison has gone into the pits. Brian Morrison second in the championship. He's not going to score any points in this race. Two laps completed, eight laps to go, including this one. And J.B. Whittam, who is getting better and better, meeting by meeting, having won once already here today, now leads. His father is in hospital, having had some heart problems. And the good news for Mr. Whittam Sr. is that J.B.'s won one race today, and he's well place to win another and the most important race of the afternoon that should cheer you up mr whittam well here comes jamie second is darren dixon and phil meller is closing up on both of them phil meller number 10 eighth in the championship 13 years of racing and look how close it is and steve spray in fourth position on another rg suzuki like the leader darren dixon is in fourth position and gaining. Steve Spray riding a terrific race, rode in the British Grand Prix, over 50 wins in his riding. Here he is, Steve, Steve Spray, there he is, number 43. Carl Fogarty has gone into the pits and the reason that Brian Morrison went into the pits and out of the race is that he had suspension problems. Now Cobb, and it's Whittam, Dixon, and Phil Meller, who said to me today it hasn't been the best of 1988s, and I want to try and put it right this year, and look how hard he's trying. He's up into second position almost, and they're both closing on Whittam. Church corner. 145 out of church, building up speed. Steve Spray is catching all three of them because it's the usual story. The three in front are getting in each other's way. Each of them trying to occupy the ideal racing line and none of them able to do so. And that means that Steve Spray has been able to close up from about a 10 length machine gap to where he is now as they go over the line. And we'll take a lap time and see how they go in relation to Wayne Gardner's lap record. One minute, 25 seconds, 99.8 miles an hour. Can we see the first 100 mile an hour lap for these Formula One machines at Thruxton today? It seems likely. You can see that the track is warming up. They're casting shadows now as they heel over right onto the side walls of their tires. Dixon giving away 250 cc's but don't forget that Dixon is on a pure Grand Prix racing machine the handling will be better than the bigger machines that he is up against he may have less power but the handling will compensate for that and it isn't all that much less power anyway and he's up into second position and he's going from first and he's in first Darren Dixon takes the lead by about a machine's length from Jamie Whittam by, as he comes out of village, onto church, out of church to Brooklyn's first, second, third, fourth, as quickly as you can say it. Dixon. Whittam. Steve Spray has just gone round at 1 minute 22.9. He has shattered the lap record. Steve Spray has broken the lap record by a tremendous margin, that is over 100 miles an hour. So, for the moment, the new lap record holder is Steve Spray, and that explains how it was that he caught up so much. You can see where he is, he's fourth at the present moment. Four Suzukis, albeit of very different capacities, because the first, the Steve Spray and Darren Dixon are both on 500cc machines. And the others are on 750 cc's. The Grand Prix Suzuki's are two strokes. The 750 cc Suzuki's are four strokes. And look how evenly matched these production racing machines are as they go around Thruxton. We're on lap six. This race is the best we have had today is terrific and Steve Spray is up into third position. Number 43, Steve Spray, 24 years old, third in the championship. 
When he's not riding bikes, he drives a minibus taking handicapped children. What a difference in his weak work to what he's doing now. Three years experience, second in the production championship in 1985. The, the Prince of Pembury, as they call it, three years in succession. And there he goes, Steve Spray on the RG Suzuki 500cc. They're already lapping tailenders, they're on the seventh lap. And this has given Darren Dixon a bit of a break because that back marker has held the others up. Darren Dixon has broken away. Three times a winner in our Grandstand Formula One coverage this year. Looks as though he's going to make it four, leading the championship by 12 points from Brian Morrison, who has already retired. Steve Spray is third in the championship. Carl Fogarty, who is not in the running at the, in the race, he's not in the first 12 because he's been into the pits, is third in the fourth in the championship. So if Darren Dixon can maintain his lead now, he's going to be in a tremendously commanding position because this is round six of the championship. There are 11 rounds of which nine count. So, lap seven, Dixon leads. Steve Spray had moved momentarily up into second place, but now Phil Meller is past him and Jamie Whittam's past him. Steve Spray's riding out of the race. He holds his hand out. It looks to me as though Steve Spray's riding out of the race. But meantime, over the line again goes Darren Dixon and the gap between himself and number 69, Jamie Whittam, is two and a half seconds. Norton, the Norton of Simon Buckmaster, the man you saw talking to me earlier on in the program, is in the pits. He has a gearbox selection problem. That's Steve Spray going out of the race, waving his hands in despair. So. And that's Darren Dixon doing the same thing. And the yellow flags are out, they're stopping the race. The yellow flags are out, the, the yellow and the crossed stripes of red. And the red flags are being waved. And for those of you who are saying why, I haven't the faintest idea. I suspect somebody must have come off unseen by us. There's the answer. Somebody has come off, uh, just trying to work out as I look at the picture where it is. It looks to me as though it's the approach to... It's church. It's coming out of church corner. Somebody has come off. So at the end of the seventh lap, the positions were Darren Dixon leading with, in second place, Jamie Whittam, third, Phil Meller. Now, it is po possible, I don't know, but they will restart the race and have a two-part race, and the results of the whole Formula One race here at Thruxton will be decided on the aggregate times of those two races, but uh, that is a hypothesis, I don't know. Whoever it was who came off looks to me as though he is all right, because there he is in the background, and the race has probably been stopped because the machine was regarded as being a safety hazard on the side of the course. What a great pity, but uh, what a blessing that whoever it was who came off, and I'm sorry I couldn't identify him, is obviously perfectly all right. We have no news of a restart. And they're still coming in. There is, we know, going to be a restart, and there is the problem on the other side, because uh, it was not the rider who we had seen behind the banking at... Uh, church it was someone else and so the news is from Thruxton that with the race likely but not definitely to be restarted at the end of the first leg a very convincing lead for Darren Dixon from Jamie Whittam and Phil Meller. Yes there's two four sports who have organized this meeting have done an absolutely superlative job in getting the course cleared and getting everybody reorganized and the man you saw standing up behind the bank with his machine in front of him was Mark Phillips, who's come in on the back of his teammate Keith Hewins Yamaha, and he's perfectly OK. So we are now going to have three laps. This is going to be a sprint race par excellence, because we've already had seven, and at the end of those seven laps, Darren Dixon was leading on his five. And there he is, number nine, just on the left of your screen there. He's in the front row of the grid with Jamie Whittam, who was in second place. Phil Meller there, number 10, who was in third place. Trevor Nation, number five on the 600cc rotary engine Norton. 
Steve Chambers was in fifth place and Andy McGladdery, the man who won at Carnaby on the Norton Rotary, and that was the first time a Rotary Norton had won a race. But now all is set. You can see the man at the front with the red flag, and when he clears the track, they will be given the 30-second board, and that means a maximum of 30 seconds, because there is the board, and it'll be considerably less than 30 seconds, I'm sure. They're just checking that the track is clear now. There was a problem earlier on, but I sincerely hope that all is right now, because engines are revving, and although they are not in first gear and therefore in danger of dragging their clutches, the, the tension will be rising. Less than 30 seconds. Three laps. Let's go. And a gigantic wheelie from somebody in the middle of the screen as they go round Allard up towards the complex, Campbell, Cobb and Seagrave. And it's Jamie Whittam in the lead. It's Steve Chambers in second place. It's Phil Bella in third. Jamie Whittam, who finished second in the first leg. So if he can stay where he is on aggregate, he's likely to win. And look at the way he's pulling away on his 750cc four-stroke Suzuki. Darren Dixon will be going hard for it. Look for the man in the yellow leathers. I haven't seen him yet, yes, there he is. I just caught a, a flash of Darren Dixon, the man who has won all three of our grandstand televised Formula One rounds thus far this season. But Jamie Whittam is setting a searing pace. We've already had Wayne Gardner's lap record at just under 100 miles an hour, very convincingly broken by Steve Spray, who then had to ride in and retire in the first leg on his 500cc Suzuki. Steve Chambers is second. Phil Meller, number 10, is in third position. Mark Phillips, number five on the Yamaha, is in fourth place, or was, as they went into the club chicane. But it is Whittam leading. Meller second, Chambers third, and in fourth position, it's Trevor Nation, number five, on the rotary engine north. There he is, that is Nation. That is Trevor Nation. The man who knocked one and a half seconds off the Formula One Donington lap record on that rotary engine Norton, there he is, and he produces 140 horsepower in there, horsepower, and he's chased by Darren Dixon, the man who's leading the championship and who won the first seven lap leg. There's Dixon, now we've just got two laps, we've got this one and the next one, and this is going to decide the Formula One results. And I suspect I may have, be having to tell you in some other way than myself now, because it's going to be very complicated to work it out on aggregate. But at the present moment, Jamie Whittam leads, and he's got a lead that leads me to believe that if you put the time for the three laps that he's about to do with the time of the seven laps he has done, he will be the overall winner, particularly as Dixon is behind him and well behind him. So, with Phil Meller, the man who has had a bad season in 1988, looking to make amends for it. He hasn't had a win this season, but he's in second place and going for it now because they're coming up to start the third and last lap in this sprint, sprint race. Over the line. One minute, 22.93. That has shattered Wayne Gardner's lap record. Faster than Steve Spray. Jamie Whittam is going for it. This is the last lap. Whittam leads, Bella is second, Trevor Nation on the Norton is up into third position. In fourth place, it is Steve Chambers on the Honda. In fifth position, it's Darren Dixon, the man who won the first seven-lap leg. But Whittam looks as though he is on his way. Look at the gap between himself and Phil Mella as they come up towards the right-hander at Church. You'll recognise it because you'll see the marshal's post and the runway going into the track. And, and Trevor Nation is catching them. Trevor Nation on the north, 140 miles an hour. He's in third position. The man from Salisbury, not so very far away from the track here at Thruxton. He's going to finish a superb third at worst, but is Bella or Whittam going to win this leg? If Whittam wins the leg, he has certainly won the race. They're out of the left-hander now at Brooklands. They're down to the chicane. It's the last few hundred yards, and Trevor Nation is gaining on them. 
And it's still Witham leading, Mellor second, Nation third, and the punch of that Norton coming out of Benz is terrific. Nation might yet do it, but it's Witham, it's Mellor, it's Nation, first, second, third. In fourth position, it is Darren Dixon. And so, I'm going to stick my neck out and say that in my view, without a doubt, as Jamie Witham puts his thumbs up, and he well may do that, and his dad in hospital will be truly delighted because Jamie Whittam, subject to official confirmation, has won the Formula One race at Fruxton.